Let's talk about uh, uh, complicated cases, but actually during lunch, uh, talking with Linus, uh, I've understood that it's not so you know, peculiar because it happens to everybody of us uh, almost every day. So we are talking about uh, uh, an African lady. She's from Nigeria. She is 33 years old. She is HIV positive for 20 years because she doesn't know exactly. She found out to be HIV positive when she was 13. She confessed me that she had been raped by a neighbor when she was nine, but also she has uh, some, uh, some anemia, so she underwent uh, some uh, transfusion, so we don't know how she acquired the infection. She was initially treated with lopinavir, tenofovir, and emtricitabine. Uh, the lopinavir was switched, uh, you know, no surprise, to darunavir about 10 years ago because of diarrhea and hyperlipidemia. But her HIV RNA was never constantly suppressed because her adherence is really not uh, perfect, uh, not at all. When we start treatment in a woman, um, and we have this idea, you know, uh, being a woman and a doctor, they often ask me to give talks in, uh, uh, about women in HIV. Uh, but actually, if we look at randomized clinical trial, there is no difference uh, between uh, uh, women and men, either naive or experienced, uh, concerning the response to antiretroviral treatment. Uh -huh. uh, and when we look at, at, the, um, at the trials that has been conducted only in women, and we are talking on mainly on integrase inhibitors. So this is the WAVE study showing that uh, um, in women, uh, actually, um, tenofovir, FTC, elvitagravir, ecobisistat were superior to atazanavir, ritonavir, FTC, and tenofovir. Uh, the same thing was obtained uh, with uh, uh, the ARIA study. The comparator was always the same, was atazanavir plus tenofovir plus FTC, but uh, the, the, the study group was uh, on uh, dolutegravir, abacavir, and 3TC in a, uh, in a fixed dose combination. And the results uh, was, again, superiority. So women seem to perform when they want well, also with the, um, with the integrase inhibitors, and it seems better on uh, integrase inhibitors than on protease inhibitors. But when we look at specific trial, you know, because if you treat only women, you could see the difference between the two regimens, but not really the difference in, in genders. But this is the, 50, the CTG 5257, and actually women had a higher rate of virologic failure than men. Not only women, but also uh, some uh, minorities. And uh, in cohort study, what has been shown, and uh, this is the Swiss HIV cohort, is that the difference in uh, uh, suppression really is mainly in the first two years of treatment between women and men. So women actually are more difficult to treat. But we are talking about all women. This is uh, the analysis region by region of the WAVE study. And this is really immediate to see that uh, in Uganda, almost 95% and 92% of women uh, who were enrolled in the study reach an undetectable viral load. If we look in the USA, and when we look in the USA, we think that women that were enrolled and that were belong to minorities, a problem of addiction, and you see that the, the rate of response uh, really was uh, insufficient, very, really, really, really poor. So, again, women, but which women we are talking about? The problem is that uh, adherence could be worse in women, and this is one of the reasons why uh, they have a higher rate of failure. And this is mainly due uh, to family obligations. Uh, uh, if they have kids uh, and the kids are HIV positive, for example, f the kids come first, uh, or their uh, schedule, everyday schedule is more complex, uh, and they always come as the last one in the family. So the, 
they don't take the medication very properly, but not only. We were talking to, to this morning about uh, raltegravir. It's very common for me in my ambulatory to see women who come back to me telling me that they have taken half the dose of the medication since many years, not just very, but since many years. And maybe they are right because the BMI is much smaller and uh, in this case uh, they, they didn't uh, fail the regimen. Also they have uh, a higher perception of side effects, which is strange because you, I mean, we are just, just to, to say something, but for each one of us who has to deal with men, could be the husband, could be the son. You know, when a woman has a headache, she just takes a pill and, and she goes. When my husband has a headache, he has meningitis, you know. So it's, so it's strange that women have a higher perception of side effects. But in HIV, this happens. So, and this is the reason why they feel that uh, uh, the drugs could be uh, too many, that uh, the, the doses could be too high, and they could have a bad impact on themselves. So, what's happened to Ekemini? Five years ago, she had the first pregnancy with a C-section. She was taking the medication correctly, and the baby was negative. Her CD4 uh, was uh, 580 cells, and her viral load was 150 copies because, as I told you, she was really never perfectly suppressed. One year after delivery, she was lost to follow-up. She disappeared. This is the attemptative description of the continuum of care in Italy that Enrico Girardi did because we don't have official data, and this was before uh, you know, most of these patients uh, were not treated uh, when we said in our guidelines treat everybody. So that's why there is uh, some differences between in care and on art that now we don't see it. But actually, we have a pretty good. This is the estimate of those living from, uh, of HIV uh, with HIV. But if we look at the diagnose, you know, we have. Uh, a pretty good cascade, but the problem is that uh, when you are linked to care and then in care, we, you see we lose patients, and it's the same uh, when we are in this situation. Even patients who are on care can disappear, and this is the cascade of care in all Europe. And you see that uh, re linking care and retaining care is not the same. We could lose them. And it's the same especially for pregnant women, because if you look at the data in Italy about how many women, which is the percentage of women who uh, arrive in the third trimester on treatment, it's about 95% of them. But when we look at how many of them is undetectable, show an undetectable viral load, the picture is completely different. We have 61%, but why? Because pregnant women in Italy uh, mainly are of African origin, and we have, it could be Northern Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa, and we have some uh, cultural barriers that really um, make difficult to treat these women, and especially during, during pregnancies. I can tell you that, uh, as it has been described by uh, Coir, um, even people coming in Italy, for example, from Northern Africa, they come from countries where they don't hear about uh, HIV, so they arrive in it and they don't have sex in their country. Uh, they arrive to Italy, they start to have sex with, uh, could be prostitutes, or, but I mean, they, they are at risk of uh, acquiring HIV infection. And then they, got, they get married with, the, uh, with their girlfriend uh, from the, their home country. And sometimes we find that she is positive when she is pregnant because there is the, you know, the pregnancy pathway, the safe pregnancy pathway. And so we discover that he is HIV positive because we discover that she is HIV positive, so the, the wife. And at the same time, she discovered that her boyfriend had betrayed her. She doesn't speak, speak Italian. She is pregnant. The baby could be at risk. It's a very, very challenging situation. And that's why it's difficult. We now are doing the, at last, 
we are doing the, uh, you know, the natural delivery, but actually when you have only 61 or 62 percent of the, of the women who are uh, undetectable, we still have uh, some uh, um, uh, C-section. And if you look at, in Italy, but uh, uh, who, the, the women who became pregnant, uh, um, knowing that they are HIV positive, but without treatment, you see that it's uh, really a high percentage. So it's important to understand that when you have to deal with someone who is, uh, who come from a, a different country uh, and she is pregnant, uh, it's always a problem. I mean, you have, because you have to start with a cultural mediator, you have to explain it very well, and it's not always easy. So she was lost to follow up. She reappeared four years later, uh, last spring, she was pregnant, 33 weeks pregnant. CD4 count was 100 cells, HIV RNA, 60,000 copies. So which treatment would you have started? Please raise your hand. First, restart tenofovir, FTC, darunavir. Or second, start four drugs, adding and uh, integrase inhibitors. So first one, who would have restarted the, the other... Uh, the, 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 the previous regimen? Who would have started with four drugs, adding and integrase inhibitors? And third, who would have started only with an integrase inhibitors? With uh, the backbone? So a lot of, the, of you did what we have done. But, but she was, uh, but which are the evidence uh, of this, you know? Obviously you are, yeah. Obviously, you are in a, in a special situation because she's pregnant, but she's almost like an late presenter because she has 100 CD4. So the data that we have is that with the reality trial, adding raltegravir to the, to the standard treatment, so with two NRTIs plus one NRTIs, doesn't work. You see no difference in, uh, in uh, but you see no difference at 48 weeks. But she's pregnant, uh, so maybe it's important to, yeah, so to really to use the uh, kinetics of the integrase inhibitors. Adding Maraviroc doesn't work. This is the optimal trial and is exactly the same, so no difference. But nevertheless, we decided to start with four drugs, tenofovir, FTC, darunavir, uh, ritonavir, plus dolutegravir. Which are the data of dolutegravir in pregnancy? These, are, these come from the... Croy, it's from the last Croy, and you know, they are, as many of our drugs, uh, the concentration in the last trimesters uh, were not as good as not in pregnancy, but actually the, there has been uh, the data from uh, either the American Antiretroviral Pregnancy Registry with only 61 pregnancy, and the register, the European register presenting at IAS, that at least showed that there was not an increase in uh, any, um, you know, uh, preterm delivery or uh, small for gestational age babies or any other problem in, uh, uh, in the baby. So it seems to be safe uh, as the other. So we decided to, to perform a, a direct observe therapy because she was never adherent. So we, we told her, come, every day, but after two weeks when the HIV RNA reached 80 copies, she developed a sepsis due to pneumococcus and was admitted to the ICU. So we perform, a, we, I mean the gynecologist, perform an emergency C-section, but the baby PCR turned positive at one and six months. After 20 years, it was the first baby, the first pos HIV positive baby. But it's not the end, because now the problem is that not only she does not take correctly her medication, but she refused, not refused the disease of the baby, and she does not give him the, the, the treatment. So thank you for your attention.